Hello and welcome back to the Draw Pod with me, your host, Elise. In this episode, I'll be chatting while drawing a scene based off of a trip to Zilker Botanical Gardens in Austin. If you're new here, this is a visual podcast where I draw something and chat with you as I go. You really don't have to watch the video to know what's going on, and if you prefer to listen to it on a podcast app, it's available everywhere. If you want to watch the YouTube video, though, check out my channel linked in the description of this podcast. And if you would like to see the final image, check out my art Instagram, which is at Elise underscore draws. So this week's episode is, you know, mostly um, kind of just a big catch up, but also I really wanted to draw this week and kind of let you in on my life and what I have been up to for like the past five or six months um, throughout this pandemic, what I've been up to, what kind of business things I've been working on and how they've been going. So, um, I'm going to do my first little few segments of this episode, which are just my life update, something new I learned and a book update. But then after that, I'm going to get into kind of, um, what all I do. Um, I have a podcast, as you can tell, I also have a YouTube channel that I upload videos to every week. I also run my little art Instagram and um, what else do I do? Oh, I have my sticker shop on Redbubble and I'm also um, doing some design work on the side and yeah, it's just, it's a lot. And I'm also applying for jobs, trying to figure that out. Anyway, that's just a little overview of all that I do, um, but I'm going to talk about that and how I manage it and things like that a little later on in this episode. But like I said, we're going to get into the segments that I have today, which are my life update, something new I learned, and a book update. Oh, and one last thing before I get into those, I would like to remind you that, well, this is coming out on October 3rd, and I believe October 5th is the deadline for Texas voter registration. So make sure you do that and make sure you have a voting plan in place. So know where you're going to vote, how you're going to vote, and how you're going to get there. So just wanted to throw that in. Now let's get into the segments. <laughs> so um, life update, my boyfriend came to visit me. Um, it was supposed to just be a few days just for the weekend, but he ended up extending his trip a little longer and that was so nice. Um, I really enjoyed hanging out with him and I feel like I got a well-deserved break. <laughs> um, now as a result, I am pretty busy with everything that I need to get done for this week and everything next week, whatever. But Um, I really enjoyed my time with him this weekend and yeah, just wanted to mention that. That's what I've been up to. Um, I also had a great call. I've had some really, really great networking calls lately. Um, one was with an alumni who was an art and communication alumni from Trinity like I was. She's a fabulous illustrator and I just learned so much from talking to her. I kind of feel more reinvigorated in my job search and kind of my career path and improving my illustration skills. So I'm really thankful I got to have that time with her. And she also looked at my resume. It was so nice. Um, I also had another call with a really great connection, um, who is just a friend of someone that I know. And, uh, he gave me a lot of really good advice about like the agency scene in Austin. So I'm really thankful for him and his time and Overall, um, I'm just very thankful for having talked to these professionals, and I so look forward to being that kind of person for other people in the future. So, you know, if you need anything now, or if you need anything in the next two, five, 10, 15 years, and some of you are listening to this podcast or whatever, um, please let me know. I would love to help with anything, help you figure out your life, because I really appreciate that other people have helped me figure out mine. <laughs> so, um, The last little thing I wanted to update you on is that I have quite a bit more free time now just because some things have opened up in my schedule. So it looks like I will be doing a lot more creatively, which I'm super excited for today when I'm recording this, which is like Wednesday. I got a lot of videos filmed. Finally, I filmed a Spanish update. I filmed a um, studio tour type thing that I'm excited to film and use my mic for. Um, And then I have like a studio vlog coming out. I always talk about this in my episodes, but I'm pretty pumped to get this content made, edited, and put out. And I'm excited to see all the illustrations I do for Peachtober, which is happening tomorrow as I'm recording this. But if you want to see what I've done so far, by the time this pod is posted, you can check out my art Instagram like I listed before. But Peachtober is a take on Inktober. 
um, by the artist or YouTube channel Furry Little Peach. Sha'an is her name. She's amazing. I love her work. I talk about it a lot. But uh, I really like her prompts for this year's Inktober. So I'm excited to get to work on them. I've been sketching ahead of time to make my work easier for me because that's kind of why I failed at a lot of these challenge type things in the past. Just because, you know, I have to put together a whole sketch and then I have to ink it and make it look good within one day. And some days I can pull it off and make it happen and dedicate all that time to it. But as I saw in a recent video where I tried drawing for an hour every single day for a week, um, it's, it, it's kind of hard and inconvenient at times. So... Yeah, so I'm really excited about that though. I have my I have like 15 sketches ready, so let's let's look forward to it. Um, as for something new that I learned this week, this is kind of a just kind of shout out to botanical gardens and things to do. Um, I I learned this week that the Zilker Botanical Garden is awesome, and you should check it out if you're in the Austin area. It's a great socially distanced thing to do. Um, but speaking of botanical gardens in general, I would highly suggest if you've like kind of run out of activities to do, you should really, really look into seeing what your local botanical garden looks like. Um, in Austin, we have the Zilker Botanical Garden and we have the Later Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, which I've been meaning to make a visit to as well. But it's just, they're so lovely. I love seeing plants on display everywhere. I've been to one in, I went to the botanical gardens in Oklahoma City, which were amazing. Fantastic. I love ones that are like indoors in like a giant bubble. It was amazing. And then I went to the San Antonio botanical gardens and those are also beautiful and amazing. And so are the Austin botanical gardens. So I would just suggest you check it out. It's super fun. It's a little plant museum. Yeah. As for a book update, this has been a bit of a wild experience, a wild week <laughs> with reading. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous episode, but ever since I got my Kindle set up, my old Kindle, it's like a 10 year old Kindle <laughs> from like middle school. But once I got that set up and connected with Libby, which is the amazing library app, you have to check it out. If you have a library card, go use it to be able to get free eBooks and audiobooks from your library. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> but anyway, I have been reading a lot as a result of having my Kindle plus Libby. Um, but this week's book reading was a wild ride because I received an advanced copy and I cannot believe I forgot to look this up before going into this episode. So I read this week, just for seven days, um, the book A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, which is the sequel to Hank Green's An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, which was his first book. He's John Green's brother, if you didn't know, but I loved this book. It was amazing, but I didn't really get a ton of time to read it and enjoy it because I was sent like this lucky copy, this rare copy from the library on Libby, where basically they lend it out to people so they can um, read it really quickly and have it sent to another person. So it's just this like very short term loan. So I had it for seven days and I had to finish it in seven days. And it was a pretty thick, pretty long book, um, but I pulled it off. I spent so much time reading though, like all of my free time was spent reading and I finished with like 22 hours to spare. So anyway, that was wild, great book. It's probably one of my favorite books I've ever read, like that series. It's just two books. Um, and it's it's just so interesting. It makes my brain so happy. I love the content of it, the story of it. It kind of reminds me a lot of, or somewhat, of the genre that was really started in Latin America that's called magical realism, where it's pretty much just like normal. Everything is normal. It's just like a fiction story of kind of something you'd, like a story that you wouldn't be surprised to hear happens in real life or something, you know, something like that. There's like little touches of magic in it, things that make it very strange at times, but the author kind of continues as if it's like not a huge deal. That's not exactly what this book is like, but it, I would call it like um, sci-fi realism as compared to like magical realism. Anyway, it is so good. Um, robots, graphic designers, um, uh, brain stuff, free will, consciousness, um, dreams, really great. <laughs> 
can't recommend it enough. I'm about to probably start Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, which is funny, kind of off brand that it's minimalism because I'm the self-proclaimed maximalist. But I think in my digital world, I do like to be more of a minimalist. But this is part of the book club that I've been participating in for the past, well, it's been two months so far. And I've read both of the books um, during the month period. It's been great. Um, it's the Bliss Bean book club. So you should check it out. Join the Facebook page. I really like it. But I'm going to start that. And that's something that's been on my reading list for a long time. I also am going to read the, well, I read or during this break in talking to you for the podcast. I read the third Alphas book, which is another YA book. I know this is a really long section about books. I'm sorry, but I'm almost done. Um, I read the third book in the series called Alphas by Lisey Harrison. I've been talking about it. I love it. I love reading YA, indulging in books from my past. Um, and then I am also reading Don't Make Me Think, finally, which is kind of about UX design, which is user user experience design, which is kind of talking about like how people navigate websites and digital products and how easy or difficult it is for them to use. So I am liking it so far. It's a really fast read, so I need to wrap it up. But yes, that has been my very long, very exciting book update. So now we are getting to the main event. Let's talk about me, Elise. Um, what I do, how I do it all, and how it's been doing. So as I mentioned before, I do YouTube videos on my channel. I have my podcast, which also goes up on this channel. I am participating in a job search because I, I would like a job. I'm currently unemployed. I am on Redbubble selling my designs and promoting my work to kind of build up some passive income. I'm also pursuing illustration. So that's pretty much what I've got going on um, that kind of takes up all my time, whether or not it sounds like, I mean, it sounds like a lot to you. I have to just say, this is not a little, this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I organize it using Trello. Um, I just wanted to mention that that's kind of how I manage every aspect of my life. I have this, it's this program that you can you don't have to download it. It's just on the internet called Trello and it's really good project management software. I have like this list of things that is about like YouTube and it's a bunch of tasks. I have one for each video and then I also have a tab for my Redbubble post that I need to make and you can kind of do like this thing called a power up so you can like customize your viewing experience or I, I shouldn't have even introduced that. It's weird to explain but basically my power up, you get one free one, is to use the calendar feature on Trello. And that has been amazing because I can kind of see in front of me what my month looks like ahead of me, what I've gotten done, and what I still need to do. So I wanted to mention Trello. Quick interjection. I I lit a candle. There's this lovely candle burning next to me that's leaves, which is like one of my fa all time all time favorite candles. But it's like definitely kind of making it somewhat hard for me to breathe. I mean, I'm good, like, but I'm just kind of, like, maybe a little bit allergic to it or, like, the perfume. So, it's been interesting recording this episode, and the allergies in Texas are absolutely terrible. I cannot, I cannot deal with them. Ragweed was, like, at an all-time high lately. Anyway, back to this stuff. Uh, so, for my YouTube channel, I have my channel that I have been posting videos to once a week, I post like just a normal video that I produce and edit and spend a lot of time planning. I make that once a week. I upload on Tuesdays and then I have the podcast that I upload on Saturdays. And I've really enjoyed doing this. I think it's been a good use of my time. I kind of get to use my graphic design skills, my video editing skills, my writing skills, and also, I guess, like, my marketing, digital marketing skills to promote myself, which I've had to learn to become okay with just like selling myself out or like posting about myself on Instagram a lot and social media. And I really only use my Instagram account for promoting myself these days. I don't really like Instagram that much. I mean, I like it too much. That's why I don't like it that much. And yeah, because it's also my biggest following. But anyway, um, you know, YouTube channel, I make content about my post-grad stresses, successes, and creative endeavors. I don't know where that tagline came from, but it's worked for me. And I guess it's good for branding to have a sort of tagline. So I'm happy about that. But 
yeah, YouTube, I, I've said it like 5 billion times. It's been great. I've been enjoying it. I like to make content ahead of time, but then I will sometimes need a little bit of a push to get back into making content like three weeks later when I'm all out of videos. So yeah, and my channel has been growing so great over the past few months. I'm like at 374 when I'm recording this podcast and like literally a week ago when I started a new journal, I wrote down just some numbers like what day it is, how many followers I have on YouTube, how many like, I don't know, like I have like a savings goal for my bank account, just kind of like saying where I'm at like seven days ago. And then by the end of the journal, I want to record where I will be. And so I did that. And so anyway, that was seven days ago that I wrote down that I had 310 subscribers. And now I am at 374 when I'm recording this podcast. And that is crazy to me because I was just at 100 subs for like a really long time. And yeah, and I know my Redbubble videos are the ones that are really gaining me a lot of subscribers. And I really appreciate everyone that's come from that. I need to come up with more Redbubble content, but I, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. So that's my YouTube situation. It's really not that hard for me to manage my time on that. I pretty much am able to crank out a video in one day um, if I need to. Sometimes I'll separate it into two. Like today I filmed two videos and tomorrow I'm probably going to work on editing them. I also, so moving into the next section of this, I am doing a podcast as well. I'm currently recording my podcast. It's called The Draw Pod. You're listening to it. Um, that has been really fun as well. And I'm gonna be honest, originally I started it out as a way to upload another day of the week to my channel because YouTube, their algorithm really, ah, really favors people who post consistently um, and multiple times a week. So this started out as just a way to get some extra content up that didn't require all of the planning and work that my normal videos do. But they aren't, I, I don't know, I want them to be like very relaxing and chill and a way for me to actually draw because for a few months that was really the only drawing that I was doing because I, I don't know, I mean, I'm still really learning how to be an artist outside of school and outside of academics and having assignments and projects to do. So this has been a really good practice and coming up with ideas and just kind of going from there and making some really cool work out of it. And I've been really thankful for the podcast for doing that. I also hope that it's made me a bit of a better talker, speaker. Um, I don't really know. I'm glad I got a microphone so at least it sounds better whenever I am just blabbering on for a very long time. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoyed this, especially if you're still listening to it. I really appreciate you. But yeah, podcast, fun. You should start a podcast. It's really easy. I'm going to make a video about it really soon about how to start your podcast, how I started a podcast. I use Anchor, which is a really great platform. I haven't had any problems with it yet. Maybe it's because I don't have a giant viewership. If you're wondering, I have about 11 active listeners on my anchor, like analytics for my podcast, which is pretty cool that I have that on there. And then I have however many people view my podcast on YouTube. So maybe I have like 20, 20 active listeners to this podcast. Really appreciate you. Um, but yeah, so that's been my podcast. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for a video about how to make your own because it's really easy. Also, I mentioned I'm doing my job search. I'm networking. I really, really thoroughly enjoy like all of the network calls that I get to do. I really appreciate people being so nice and giving me their time. I think I touched on this enough earlier on in the episode, so I'm not going to dive into it too deeply, but the job search is going okay. I need to make a company list. I will be starting to consider some ad agencies. I just I just wrote a very interesting email to an Austin ad agency. I hope it turns out well. I think it's pretty funny. I think I'm very funny. It was basically like, hey, I want to apply to this job. I'm filling, you know, this is my application. And then I was like, here's what I can offer. 
I am, uh, here's why I'm a fabulous designer, blah, 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 blah. And I use like little sparkly emojis next to it. I hope that if nothing else, this email just stands out and they won't skip over it or put it into the trash because I just want a chance. I just want a shot, you know? And then I also said below it, I'm like a rising star content creator, which is so true. I am a star. I'm rising. It's happening. So I will let you know if they get back with me ever and if I can get an internship or a job from them. But anyway, that's that. Going to make a company list and continue to talk to people. Um, The next thing I do is my Redbubble, which I talk a lot about on this channel. I try to do my Redbubble. I try to upload to Redbubble. I'll do like three or four designs that I make and I'll upload it twice a month to my shop make sure to promote it on social media, on my Instagram, make a cute little post about it. Um, And that's really the promo that I do. And then I'll put it on my Pinterest. That's the other thing. And I really need to do a little more research into Pinterest and why it works for me and how it can work for other people. Because someone just commented that if I can make a video like that, it would be like extremely helpful because no one else is making videos about that. And that video is at like nearly 5,000 views right now, which is absolutely insane to me. So yeah, I upload my stuff to Red Bull to kind of stay fresh, stay consistent. And um, for those wondering, I make around $20 on Redbubble each month. I'm trying to grow that a little more. So it's a nicer chunk of passive income, but I really appreciate that I'm at the t- about $20 mark so far. So really happy with that. Um, the last thing I'm going to kind of talk about is illustration. And this is something that I don't really have as concrete of a plan or like tasks written out for it. I'm really just trying to draw and find my style because, um, I, I loved my college experience. I loved the art department at my school, but I was never really encouraged to do illustration type work. And again, not super mad about it. I mean, I just wish I would have had the opportunity. I wish that idea would have been entertained a little bit more because I've always kind of leaned to a more illustrative style. And at my school, it was more important to um, kind of learn like drawing skills, which I love um, and painting and just kind of following assignments. And you can basically go one of two ways. You can like veer way off the path and really own it and have your own style and that can be illustrative or something else um one of my friends does these really cool like alien dudes and I love them and I love that she has like owned that for herself but um the other end of the spectrum is kind of the um just kind of sticking to the status quo what they want to teach you what the assignments tell you to do and draw in a very non-illustrative way. It's hard for me to explain, but if you were an art major at my school or just an art major in general, you probably know what I'm talking about. But part of the issue too, you know, I said like on one end of the spectrum, there's this and one end of the spectrum is that. There's not really much room in the middle. So it's not much of a spectrum. (laughs) It's kind of two sides of a coin or something, but there's not really room in the middle for people to kind of try something different that's sometimes weird but is also kind of in line with the normal traditions again I don't have words for it but I've been thinking about that a lot and I am trying to figure out what my illustrative voice is what my artistic voice is and um, for that I'm really just doing things like Peachtober and um, just drawing whenever I feel like it just writing about what I like to draw doing Skillshare illustration classes talking to other illustrators, things like that. So that is what I wanted to talk about for this episode. Um, In terms of like the future, like what I'm going to do, I don't really know. I kind of plan to do this YouTube thing for like six months. And then not that I was ever going to end it, but I was like, this is my goal is to just do six months. Um, But I'm definitely going to continue on with it. Um, Will I have a full-time job while I'm doing that? I hope so. Um, Or will I know a lot more about my illustrations and who I am as an artist by the end of these six months, by 2021? I really hope so. So, um, well, I can only keep moving from here. So, yeah, um, in the spring, moving forward, hopefully I'll have a job. Hopefully I'll know more about illustration, have some 
nice freelance work going on. And yeah, I'm just kind of going with the flow. So anyway, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of The Draw Pod. Make sure to leave a review or a star rating if you're on Apple Podcasts or give it a like on YouTube. All of that like really helps a lot. So anyway, um, I'm going to go to bed now. Good night. Have a good day. Good morning. I don't know. But goodbye.